Hi everyone, Paul Levy with Brownells here, and today we have another gun from the vault. Uh, here we have an HK416 clone, a 416D uh, pretty much, and we built this off a Brownells BRN4 lower receiver. Uh, of course, MR556s are pretty close. Uh, you can find some other 416 kits floating around out there, uh, but these are from some of the parts kits we got straight out of Germany. Uh, so it's an authentic, uh, at least the upper handguard, a lot of the core components from an HK416 gun issued to the military in like new conditions. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the HK416 itself uh, was adopted by Special Forces in the U.S. in the early 2000s. Of course, it's famous uh, for being the gun that was used in the Osama bin Laden raid. Uh, and that particular gun was a shorter barreled, uh, 10 and a half or 10.3 inch uh, 416 uh, used by the Navy SEALs. Uh, but where this gun originated from is actually going back to the G36, which HK uh, had developed into the 90s. Uh, so they took that gas system when they were tasked uh, by US Special Forces to upgrade the M4, make a more reliable firearm. So they took the gas system from the G36 or a very similar gas system and adopted it to the M4. Now it's not as simple as taking a piston and plugging it into an AR-15 and calling it good. Uh, HK did a ton of modifications to the platform to make it reliable, robust. Everything's beefed up. They uh, did what HK does and they, and they really improved uh, the platform. So a few things they did uh, to upgrade the standard M4 is one, the gas piston assembly. And when you do that, it kind of changes the nature of how the whole gun uh, functions inter internally. Uh, one of those things is the carrier tilt. Uh, when that piston hits the top of the carrier, it wants to go down at the rear. So they had to extend the buffer tube down and redesign the carrier to make sure that transition was nice and smooth and didn't lead to excessive wear. Uh, they also beefed up the upper receiver. You can't see it right here, but the threads on the 416 actually extend about twice as far as a standard AR-15, allowing more barrel nut engagement, which allows heat transfer to take place and allows for a more uh, rigid, reliable uh, system. Uh, one other thing you may notice is the height over bore is a little bit higher on the 416. They of course have to uh, account for this gas system up here. Uh, and you may wanna use uh, lower iron sights if you're shooting this rifle. Internally, there's a few other changes as well. Uh, they did include a firing pin safety, uh, which HK deemed was beneficial to the platform. So they added that over a standard AR-15 and added a firing pin safety spring. So from here, I think we'll go ahead and disassemble it so I can show you a few of those key differences. Uh, take the magazine out, of course, make sure she's clear. And disassembles. It disassembles just like an AR-15 as you think it would for the most part. Uh, so low receiver, uh, really nothing different there outside of what I mentioned about the buffer tube, uh, but the buffer is specific to the HK416, uh, is the weight to, uh, to, it's really optimized for that recoil impulse that that piston system has. Set that aside. The bolt uh, and carrier come out the back, AR-15 charging handle. So from here, I'll take the handguard off, which is meant to be taken off in the field. We'll do that real quick with a screwdriver. And one thing you'll notice about this firearm is everything is tight. Very high tolerances, everything is machined uh, impeccably as you would expect from HK. Pull that off, you can see very snug. And there's your gas system right there. That's the heart of the HK416 operating system. Very similar to the uh, G36. And I'll show you one key element that makes this particular one interesting. And I should say this is a later revision, we'll get to that. So to disassemble this, you'll pull the connecting rod back and out of the gun, it tilts out of the way. And then take your gas piston and it simply pulls out like so. Now this doesn't look like your typical gas piston assembly. Uh, it does of course have a, a ring assembly here to get a nice tight gas seal. Uh, but the interesting thing is they have this uh, nipple on the front. So when gas vents up through the gas port, it impacts this portion right here, this angled piece, and that pushes the piston backwards. Uh, once it goes back far enough, the gas can vent through the front of the gas block right here. So the gas assembly only gets enough gas to function the gun, so it's nice and tuned. It's basically a self-tuning system. You don't need an adjustable gas block, really. So the gas will vent out the front. Uh, this is also added on the Over the Beach model to prevent, uh, say if there's water in the bore, uh, you won't have a catastrophic failure. Uh, one other thing that HK added on the Over the Beach model, which you can't see, is over the extractors, they put a pin in place. So if that water is in the bore and there is overpressure, the extractor won't blow out and you can still operate the bolt if needed. 
a nice added uh, safety and reliability feature. So that's the HK416, or at least this particular version we built here at Brownells. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to catch you on another episode of From the Vault.